Okay, looks like it fired up. Over here at Be Cool Radios, we're going to show you all the little tricks and tips to get this frequency counter to work and also be quiet. Now you hear there, there's some static, right? Remember that crazy whining noise? Well, the reason these things whine like that is because, uh, yeah, they, they get too much voltage to the units. These things put out about 14 volts. Uh, and they try to regulate it down to 5 volts. It doesn't do a very good job. And the drivers kind of scream that RF bleed into the whole circuit. So the trick really is two things. It's the grounding, where you attach the ground. Don't have multiple ground because then you have common mode loop and you'll induce a noise. The other thing is I use these 8 volt regulators. So I got the 14 volts coming in. I snip off this middle leg because that's ground. I get that from the tab. And then this leg over here is the output. That's 8 volts. So that means I've run these counters then at 8 volts and its internal regulator doesn't have to work as hard. Okay, and I'll kind of show you that here. And I'll show you a few of the tricks I do because all these units, even the same models, they'll give me noises in different ways. Sometimes I'll attach this uh, regulator right to that main cap. Yeah, that seems to be a good one. But other times I put it back here by the main switch and I actually attach the input to the regulator to the switch. And you see how they used a wire tie there to just keep it from flopping around. But So the switch is your 14 volts into the regulator. The output of the regulator is in 8 volts and that's going to go right to this counter here. And you want to keep this wire as short as possible. Okay, the other side of that is where do you hook up the ground? Sometimes you're going to have to just do some tricks. If you still have that noise and you can't get rid of it, it's probably on the ground side. And what I've done here is I used a 150 ohm resistor and tied that to the ground up by the front of the radio. And then the last trick I do so over here on test point one, you see there I have a 220 ohm resistor on the on here. So this counter doesn't load down the IF over here. Because there's plenty of signal here for the counter, but yeah, the input impedance is a little low uh, for these old guys. So I put this in there to uh, just give a little isolation there. And the last thing is, yeah, this last this ground that goes to the counter signal yeah you don't want to hook that up see I got the shielded cable added from that test point but then I don't I don't put those shields together because that's a common mode ground fault and that will yeah your your uh, your noise will just bleed right through there straight from this ground into this uh, frequency counter so yeah it doesn't need that one last thing I'll show you on is, well, maybe I'll show you a few more things here. See how this frequency counter reads 35.205? Well, that is the true IF frequency. I mean, that's really the real frequency. But what you can do with these counters is uh, you can remove that 7.8 megahertz IF frequency, right? So what you do is you come in here. Okay, so what you have to do is you have to cycle through this. You want 7.8, so you got to go to zero, all the way to zero on this one. And click it. Oops. Let's see if we can do that again. Okay. One, try that again. There's your seven. Oh, I hit the button too hard. 
<laughs> Seven. Come on, we could do this. You guys are laughing, aren't you? All right, let's try this. Here we go. All right. Seven. Eight. All right. There's two buttons on there, so you have to use both buttons. Okay, now it's reading 4305 because it's actually adding that. It didn't subtract it. So you have to go back into that menu and change the IF to positive. Or see that? Change it to a U. Okay, now we have 27405. But here's the deal. These old D858 CB radios, they got some funky switching things going on here. Yeah, we're kind of used to the sideband being off by uh, 25 kilohertz. There's upper, there's lower. But when you're on AM, usually it will read the right frequency on receive, but as soon as you key this up, these guys, they actually use the lower sideband crystal. Maybe it was the upper. And the whole TX shifts when you uh, key up on this thing. So they're a little harder to figure out sometimes. But uh, there's another way to do this, and that's tying this frequency counter to the PLL end gate. Now when you do that, you're going to always see the correct frequency. You'll have no offsets for sideband or TX, which is great. But you don't see this last digit change. For the clarifier yeah what's more important to see those numbers change or to have the readout read what it's supposed to yeah that's that's the dilemma okay so um i hope anybody out there is trying to put one of these counters in their rigs and it's screaming and making noise i hope this video section really helps you because uh yeah it took a lot of experiments to get this stuff figured out and sometimes uh I showed you all those tricks because maybe one works and the other one doesn't, or you have to do them all. It's, it's really funny how these radios are. Alright, off to the next section.